Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before we get started on tonight's video, I'm going to be telling you about our sponsor for the evening, and believe me, you want to stick around for this because, um, well, I mean, our sponsor's awesome, as well as tonight's video is pretty cool, too. It's a new twist on a classic Creepypasta story, and one that I'm pretty sure all of you will appreciate, because, I mean, how often do I ever get a chance to go back to the classics these days? Well, tonight's sponsor is the one that all of you have come to know and love, Raid Shadow Legends. Honestly, take up Raid Shadow Legends because I really like the game. I play the game on my PC as opposed to playing it on mobile now because it can run in the background and I can upgrade stuff in between <laughs> recording and flipping through and talking to different people about the YouTube channel. You get to build your best squads with specific factions and fight in faction wars where no cross-faction team-ups will be allowed. Raid has 16 different factions, such as orcs, dwarves, undead hordes, and the like. My personal favorite faction is the Dark Elves. As you can see, I got a couple different Dark Elves here. There were once a single kingdom with high elves becoming something like a Byzantine empire in terms of style and politics, and at some point in the past, they had this massive civil war over the usage of dark magic that saw many of them flee into exile, later becoming the Dark Elves. The high elves still rule the kingdom of Aravia, while the dark elves claimed the Durham Forest, and they're a bit like the drow living there in their own fallen society. Plus, the champions are just cool. They're dark, they're gothic, and they have plenty of epic, rare, and legendary champions of their own. You can challenge yourself in the ongoing tournaments, compete against the entire raid community while fighting the Spider Den, the Ice Golem's Peak, the Almighty Fire Knight, or the Notorious Dragon in order to win awesome, rare rewards. So if you go to the video description down below and click on the special link, if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, and you'll get one free champion, the Hexweaver. Click that link in the description down below, and all the treasure will be waiting for you right there that nice little box you see up in the top right hand corner of the screen when you open up the game. You can find me in the game under the nickname Mr. Creepy Puffita. Hey, Mr. Creepy Pasta was taken. And if you're quick enough, you can also join my clan, which basically guarantees you victory if you're fighting alongside me. So go to the video description, click that link, get your 100,000 silver, get your free champion, the Hexweaver, because all that will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. Good luck, guys, and I'll see you in there. Out of all the places you could possibly get into an accident, the long roads of Utah are arguably some of the worst. Vast swaths of red desert stretched out for as far as the eye could see, an infinite expanse between you and the rest of the world. Bring a GPS is recommended for trips through such regions, as cell service is often unavailable. Too bad I've forgotten mine at home. While the Red Bull charging through my veins had up to this point allowed me to take the Kentucky to California commute, generally unimpeded, the absence of any gas stations in miles and quickly diminishing light made me painfully aware that the weight in my eyelids could at any point take over, leaving me crashed in an utter wasteland for who knows how long. Thus, you can understand my absolute relief when there emerged from the hazy distance the first building I felt like I'd seen in hours. The road sign only increased my happiness when I saw what it was. The Angabite Inn. Now, random off-brand hotels in the middle of nowhere are practically never going to be good news. Another red flag was the complete lack of cars in the parking lot, save for mine and what I would imagine to be the staff's. Despite all this, sleep-deprived me saw this as a gift straight from the heavens. And besides, I'd rather have an uncomfortable night in a dingy inn than crash half asleep in the middle of nowhere with intense weather of Utah slowly killing me. Before I could even think about it, I was already parked and opening my trunk. As I entered the lobby, wheeling my things behind me, I was immediately bombarded with the intense mediocrity. The clunk 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 of the wheels against the sidewalk turned into a soft purr as the suitcase met the old carpeted floor likely last updated in the 80s. Fuzzy purple sofa chairs flanked tables too short for anyone to comfortably use, and while there was a single TV, its monitor was all white, save for a screensaver-like notice bouncing around it. A red little box saying, service unavailable. Apparently, it was more accurate than it intended to be, as occupying the front desk was a slightly portly man in a work uniform, passed out, asleep. <clears throat> I coughed, approaching him. His breathing pattern stopped cycling for a moment, but he returned to his snoring in no time. <coughs> I coughed slightly louder, watching his back rise and fall methodically. 
As he paused yet again, I continued taking my chance. Hello, I half said, half asked. This one finally got him up, his eyes wide open and fearful, mouth blubbering like a fish out of water. Hello, hello, hello welcome to the, uh, <clears throat> welcome to the, uh, the Anger Bite Inn. How can I be uh, of assistance? He hopped back more into his chair, running his hand through his brown, greasy hair. A room, please, I responded. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. He seemed to have recovered his flow. Yeah, a room, we have plenty. Well, what are you looking for in particular? We could get you a suite, just a little extra. They're all available at the, at the moment. No, thank you, I'm good. All I need for right now is a bed, and that's it. I'll take whatever you got. He smiled. Well, I don't know if you saw from the parking lot, but we're all empty. Might as well give you room, too. It's closest. Probably most convenient if you're going to try sleeping. I returned the grin, but then stopped a little, confused. Wait, why, why, why room two? I asked. Did you have a room one here? I mean, I'm fine with room two, of course. I'm, I'm just curious is all. He grimaced for a fraction of a second before responding. Well, I'm afraid that brings me to my next point. Uh... Listen, between you and me, I think it's I think it's bullshit, but well, the hotel rules require for you to verbally confirm to me that you, for no circumstances, will enter room one, and that if you do, any consequences are your fault rather than that of the Angabite um, organization. He paused slightly before continuing. Just uh, just don't go in go just don't go into room one. That's all. I verbally agreed, and then paid for the room. But the warning was chewing at me. Echoing through my mind was one question. What was in room one? Ironically, his precaution just made me infinitely more interested in what secret was hidden there. After brushing teeth and getting everything tucked away in my room, I decided on a plan of action. I had agreed that I wouldn't enter room one, and that promise was one that I intended to keep. However, I was never told I couldn't peek inside. And from the small peephole in all hotel doors, that's exactly what I intended to do. It wasn't like anybody could walk out of their rooms to see my sleuthing. There was no people in the first place. I could feel cold sweat form in my hands as I approached the doorframe. You don't have to do this, I told myself. But I still found myself drifting ever closer to the door by the second. My hands, shaking slightly, placed themselves on the cold wood my eye gradually approaching the peephole, my heart beat like a drum in my chest. As my eye finally finished its journey, however, the drum stopped dead in its rhythm. The room's walls and everything in them were just pure white. White bed, white bedstand, white curtains, white dresser, white everything, but what horrified me was not the color of the room, but rather what was at the very center of it. Sitting in a similarly white chair facing the window, opposite me was a little girl. Long white hair cascading down her shoulders. She was inhumanly pale, as with everything else there, but also inhumanly still. Though you have no reason to believe me, I swear to you, if any such thing does truly exist, this was, at its definition, a ghost. If my heart were once a drum, it it interrupted the silence now with a pace of a machine gun, ripping at my mind. I, I couldn't take my eyes away, but neither could they process what they were seeing. I still can't. I don't know how I slept that night. You know, I, I chalked it up to the powers of, of an 18-hour car drive, but even so, it was impressive. So here's where I got careless. Me, considering myself a sane human being. Also, considering what I had seen to be impossible, or at least incredibly unlikely to the highest degree. So I had just gone through a rough day. I was mixing up my dreams with reality. What better way was there to prove that nothing was amiss than to look back in it and prove that I was wrong. I was wrong all along, right? And that there was no, there was no spooky ghost looking at a window. <laughs> so look again, I did. And there was no white room. In fact, there was, there was no room at all. There was no texture at all. So, shocking to me. The only thing I could discern was just pure red. It was as if someone had built a wall of red behind the door, blocking out the rest of the room. 
and the machine gun heart picked back up again as my mind went racing. At least, at least it's not, it's not that room, I thought to myself. Now maybe they put red tape over the peephole to prevent people like me, you know, from looking in. I was just imagining things. I got all my stuff in the car, but before I left, I asked the front desk guy about the room again. See, I simply couldn't contain my curiosity. So, um, I didn't quite have the chance to ask yesterday, I stammered awkwardly. But, but I mean, just, just out of pure curiosity, what really is in that room? You know, room one, the one that you talked about. He took a breath in, looking at me square in the eyes. Well, the uh, previous workers here had a whole superstition about it, which I call bullshit. All I know is that bad stuff happen when people go inside, and that's all I need to know. Even so, some stories they tell about it, they were... They were interesting, to say the least. I pushed him to go further. Stories like what? I asked him, hardly containing my excitement. Well, you... You, you really... Well, if you're interested, I suppose it... I can't dissuade business since you're leaving rather than coming in. There's no harm telling you. He paused once more, and I could see him weigh the options in his head. Finally, he jumped back in. So, of course, um, take this with a, a, a bucket of salt, right? It's total hogwash. All of it. Either way, a story's a story. I might as well tell it. It starts with uh, three decades ago. Three decades ago, when Miss Jennings, the owner's daughter, she... Um, well, she died in that very room. The owner of the hotel, Dante Jennings. He, he wasn't coming back here in years. I mean, a guy was totally torn up about it. According to the people who had my job before I did, never left the room afterwards. Her spirit still haunts it to this day. <laughs> here, now, here's where it gets creepier, though. He lowered his voice, leaning slightly into me, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. They see that entire room. And everything in it, yeah. It's all totally white. And all of her, too. He paused again, scratching at his nose. Well, not all of her, okay. <laughs> the only things that were different colors were her eyes. He then leaned back out, voice back to normal as he bid me a hearty farewell. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye. Do enjoy the beauties of Utah. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, whether it be an episode of something or tonight's podcast or tonight's YouTube. If you guys are watching on YouTube, I strongly encourage you to click subscribe so that you're able to get all of the updates for the YouTube series is that currently go on. And if you're not on YouTube and you're listening on the podcast, thank you for listening on Spotify or on Google or on iTunes or wherever you happen to be listening from. And a very big thank you to all my patrons. And you can always join them at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. People like Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chapinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Stephen Van Huss, Chance Burnett, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cal, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Macedo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Andrew Kirisuba Warnock, Bad Honey, Creepypasta Adam, Someone You Love, Brennan Wright, Said The King 56, and Somber Puppet. Thank you guys so much for your continued support to all of you on Patreon, you guys that are down there in the description and everyone else. And thank you all for listening and watching and being subscribed. Sweet dreams. <laughs>